Hi everyone, welcome back to Casual Watch Talk. Well, I'm very glad to welcome Mike France back onto the show. Mike, thanks so much for joining us. Always a pleasure, Sam. Thank you for inviting me. I feel like we spoke recently, but since we last spoke, the there's been two British Prime Ministers, so by my calculation, I've not spoken to you for eight years. Ah, uh, well, hang on, I, I I didn't check before I came on. There may be a, may have been three by now, and it's <laughs> hard to hard to keep count. Okay, well let let's definitely get on to the the main event here because I've only I've unfortunately well not fortunately and unfortunately i've only seen a couple of images of this watch I've, I, I was kindly sent the press kit but just the few images that i've seen just absolutely spectacular so this is the bel canto which i believe you were certainly showing at wind up to a select few yes we uh, we <laughs> we had a couple of uh, a couple of watches with us at wind up it wasn't um, it wasn't on open display because uh, as you know we don't launch it until the beginning of november so uh, photography was uh, seriously restricted it was uh, almost uh, taking people into a back room and uh, showing them i have to say well what 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 can i say i've i've actually got one on my wrist i don't know if anybody can see it but um um, this is this is the bel canto. It is our first entry into the world of making sound, an audible indication at the hour. It's a full striking watch, chimes on the hour every hour in the key of D, which is important. Um, it's the be- okay. bel canto translates, as I'm sure you know, from the Italian into beautiful singing. And uh, so, whilst it is possible, difficult, but um, um, not as you know, not as difficult to create any sound from a watch creating a beautiful sound um is uh, is is no small no small feat quite interesting really because there are books on how to produce a watch that makes sound you you and i could um, create a tourbillon um, if we had the um, if we had the watchmaking skills we could take a book out of the library and, and learn how to build a tourbillon actually that doesn't exist in um striking watches charming watches a there are very few relatively speaking um even versus tourbillons and secondly, the few brands that have mastered it um, are very secretive about the process. And now, having spent more than two years working on the Bel Canto, we kind of understand why. Um, because there's a, for us, there was a huge process of trial and error to get to where we wanted to get to with both the look of the watch, the aesthetic of the watch, and more importantly, the sound of the watch. It's been a, an incredible journey. It's, I, I was describing it to people over the weekend as a, it's a story of four young men, actually. You'll guess I don't care myself in, the, in, in that number. I could be their father. Those four men are Frank Stelzer, who created the Calibre FS01, which is the movement with inside the bel canto. Uh, more of his uh, eureka moment in a second, because it really was a eureka moment for, for him and us. Uh, Will Brackfield, um, our designer, Adrian Buckman, our head of design, and York Bader Jr., who is our head of product. Now, these four young men have spent um, more than two years perfecting, trying to perfect the bel canto. Um, at times a labor of love, at times a labor of hate. I mean, they, um, they've, they've had some serious battles because not only did we want to produce a, a watch that chimed, we wanted to take the interesting, most beautiful parts of that and put it above the platine. Sounds easy to do, it's not. And then even if you could take it above the platine, locating those most important parts so that they look beautiful to the wearer is even more difficult. And of course, that leads to huge tensions between design and engineering, because, you know, every time they requested that even a screw moved X millimeters or was hidden behind the platine, which often was the case, because what we wanted to do is take a lot of the not so attractive elements of any movement and put it underneath the platine. Then every time those discussions took place, it meant that poor Frank and the guys would have you know, literally days and weeks of work to try and accommodate that aesthetic requirement. But what they have ended up with, I think, is something very important. It's certainly very important for us. Uh, you'll see um, when we launched the watch, we're calling one of the these sort of marketing lines if you like is 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 that we've chosen is our finest hour and actually i think this is exactly what it is it is uh, even even in some ways above and beyond uh, the creation of calibre s21 this is uh, 
for a small independent watchmaker like ourselves uh, to have created something of this ilk, I think is, um, um, you know, uh, I do think, I do honestly believe is quite spectacular. And I think it is an important watch in a number of different ways. Nobody, nobody has produced anything of this ilk anywhere near the sort of price point that we have uh, managed to achieve here. If you, if I'd seen this watch and not not immediately known that it was Christopher Ward, because it's not overtly Christopher Ward is, is not on the dial, I oh. would be thinking this is MBNF, Ulis Nardan, something of that calibre, because it looks absolutely spectacular, even from the renders. Making these high complications accessible to people as well is... Is a real is a real feat of engineering. Thank you, and um, and I'm bound to agree with you. Uh, I, I tell you. One of the most amazing things that happened over the weekend was that a customer had travelled some distance um, uh, to 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 come and see us, uh, and we showed him the bell counter. He broke into tears. I'm serious. It had that sort of impact on him. He never thought he would be able to own. Um, and wear a watch of this ilk. Um, and it was quite an emotional moment for the entire team, frankly. Um, it is, um, I do think it's an important watch on a number of levels. Um, and it is a watch without compromise. Um, we've talked about this before, about uh, our uncompromising approach. Um, you know, we, we, we adopted the same approach to this watch. So working with some of the partners you're familiar, we've worked with before, people like Armand Strom, uh, Armstrong created the platine. The blue platine on the watch um, was Armstrong. Why do we go to them for that? Because, well, they're, they're really expert at skeletonized watches and therefore they're brilliant at creating uh, plates that you can then um, work from. And this is not a typical dial, obviously. <laughs> this is, this is, it's a, it's, you know, the, the components are above the platine or the plate, the dial, if you like. Uh, Cronode, we've worked with them again. We worked with Cronode last year on the C60 concept. And what they've done for us this time is the bridges, the hammer and the gong, the really visible elements um, above the um, above the above the platine are done by Cronode. And you know, Cronode work with some of the brands that uh, you have just mentioned. More than a third of the cost of FS01 is in the finishing, never mind the um, the bridges and the hammer and the gong itself. It's actually in the uh, in the finishing, and they're they're spectacularly good at finishing. And then uh, a company called Viquideco, who we've worked with for many many years, they produce um, parts for our um, Calibre SH twenty one. And Viquideco work with people like um, Cartier, Hublot, etc. They created some special wheels because one of the beauties of of this is the guys have created the gear chain uh, in the centre of the watch in a vertical format, all adding to this beautiful symmetry. The aesthetic was really important to us to get right here. And I think uh, Will and Adrian have really created a a, a genuinely beautiful looking watch, um, uh, but not always easy <laughs> and not always thanked, not always thanked by Frank and the guys. So, uh, um, but yes, it's, it's, uh, it's, um, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful watch. It really is. Do you mind if we just talk about functionally how, how it works? So it's obviously manual wine. It does it have a separate mechanism no. for the actual check? No, it's not. Manual. Well, no, it's, it's an automatic watch. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. and, uh, it's based on, um, it's based on the base movement is, uh, an SW200. Now we created, Ooh, 10 years ago or so now, um, Calib JJ01, which is the jumping hour module that um, Johannes Janka actually um, developed for us. Uh, Frank was working alongside him um, as his understudy at the time. Frank has since uh, uh, taken over, as you know. Um, and what Johannes created with, um, uh, with Calib JJ01, the jumping hour module, was um, was actually and still is, as far as we're aware, the most accurate jumping hour module that had ever been created, which is kind of a bold statement. But if you if you if you look at most jumping hours, they will ju- the hour will jump just be you know quite significantly in terms of seconds um, ahead of the striking of the hour. What we wanted was it absolutely bang on 
Yeah. So he created uh, an incredibly accurate jumping hour that changed absolutely on the hour. And to do that, he had to make sure that the power to do that was spread over the course of the hour so that it was accumulated perfectly rather than all being in one sweep. Frank's Eureka moment, which um, which I um, which I referred to earlier, was he realised that it would be possible, he thought, in theory at least, to modify the jumping hour module and turn it, in, turn it into a, um, a chiming one. 50 new components later, uh, that's what he has achieved. And the genesis of this, um, of the bel canto, is actually in the bel aura, which we created for Meistersinger. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure everybody understands that we we, we produce most of Meistersinger's <laughs> watches for them. Um, oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, no. probably 95% of all Meistersinger's watches are ours. Interesting news for some people who don't know. And uh, we created the Bellora for them, which was the striking watch now, which is a great watch. The problem with the Bellora is not a problem, but for us, we wanted to show the striking mechanisms. We wanted to show the hammer. We wanted to show the gong. We wanted above the platine. Was my singer put a classic my singer dial over it, and in the original form, um, the bell aura movement is not an attractive movement. It doesn't have to be because it's going to be hidden, and that's the journey that we went on to um, take our bell aura movement, if you like, into the bel canto, which was this tension between engineering and design to create the most beautiful watch I think uh, we've ever created, and so that was. Phase one, the phase two is instead of being inside a stainless steel case, we learned early on that the best possible case for resonance of the sound, which is, as I say, really important to us, um, was to use uh, grade five titanium. So uh, the case is grade five titanium. Titanium is denser than steel and therefore creates a greater level of vibration and resonance. So you get a much better sound out of it. And actually, although nobody will see this, the work that the design team put into inside the case to create the optimum cavern to generate the optimum amount of vibrations was just as important and time consuming as the the variation of the light catcher case that we um that that, that adorns the the outside of the watch so it was um there's a lot of things here that most people will never get to see which uh, uh all contributed to this the creation of this beautiful, beautiful uh, sounding uh, chime, uh, which, as I say, is in the key of D, um, which uh, for those of uh, for those who aren't that familiar with the solfege system, which is uh, the system that we're all familiar with from the sound of music, I think, um, uh, <laughs> D is re, a drop of golden sun. Anybody who's lucky enough to own and wear a um, bel canto will definitely have a drop of golden sun arriving in their lives, that's for sure. A deer, a female deer, Ray, a drop of golden sun. When we've shown this watch to people, they, the, their guesses at prices, even knowing that it's Christopher Ward, have ranged from sort of 8,000 to, in one case, 30,000. The opening price in dollars for a Vicuna strap, Vicuna leather strap, beautiful strap, is uh, $3,595, $3,595, rising to 3975 on the titanium bracelet. And the titanium bracelet gives it, a, again, a very interesting, different look. It sportifies it a little bit for, uh, you know, below $3,600, uh, at entry level, um, you know, as I, as we say earlier, Sam, uh, nobody has come anywhere near, anywhere near this sort of um, quality of watch, of complication and finishing ever. And I, that's why I think it is an important watch. And we all look at, you know, MB and Fs. You, you know, we look at legacy one and twos and one oh ones, and we all wow, you know. And these are fifty thousand, eighty thousand pound um, watches, and uh, you know, this is this is in the stratosphere, isn't it, for most people and out of most people's reach. Now, I'm not suggesting that, you know, three and a half thousand dollars is cheap. It's not. It's um, and it would still be out of many people's um, reach. Um, but it brings a whole new number of people into potential ownership of um, of something of this ilk. And that's uh, I think, you know, 
we're rather proud of that. Before we finish up here, is it limited to... How, Three, limited? 300 pieces. Oh, wow. Uh, although, um, from the demand we've had already, um, even people wanting to buy it unseen... Uh, they've heard about it and haven't seen it. Uh, um, we're not. We can't. We won't uh, increase the numbers of, of the blue, uh, the Azoro blue. But uh, I think we may be forced to uh, bring out a uh, second colour, and um, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> but this move, this 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 complication will be with us for a number of years. It'll take different routes going forward. Such a clever thing that Frank has uh, devised here that it, we're already beginning to think about how we will apply it in a different way in, at some point in the future. Mike, thanks so much for joining us. That was fascinating. I'll leave all the links to the, the website in the description down below. Always a pleasure, Sam. And I can't wait to, when you'll be, uh, high, as you know, you're high up on the list to receive, uh, to receive a sample. I, I really... I'm not suggesting you're going to cry um, <laughs> when you see it, but I, I know, knowing you now as well as I do, I think you're going to absolutely love this watch in the metal. I, I'm sure I will. I can't wait. I can't wait. We'll see you all on Casual Watch Talk next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.